my name is John Steele. I was uh, just 80 years old and uh, born in New York City in 1935. And I started uh, with Joe Pilates in 1963. Uh, up to that point, I'd, uh, I'd gone to college, become an attorney. I, w I was working at the time at a downtown uh, law firm. And I started with Joe, uh, I think, probably sometime around September 1963. Uh, I didn't particularly get along very well with my mother at this stage in my life. Uh, but she kept saying, it's the greatest thing, it's the greatest thing, it's just, it's the, uh, you know, it was, my mother got extremely enthusiastic about certain culty things or things that were a little bizarre. So, and I kept poo-pooing it, but I had a chronic, terrible stiff neck. And finally, I just got to the point and I, my mother said, well, just, just give it a chance. So somehow she uh, uh, convinced Joe that I should come up there. And I met Joe at about 7 o'clock in the morning outside of his, he expected me. She'd set up an appointment outside of his studio at 939 uh, 8th Avenue, New York City. And I mean... I, I, it's just almost impossible to convey what it was like to meet Joe the first time. But what, what was in my mind, of course, was that it was a whole bunch of my mother's nonsense. And this was just a fatty thing. And I'm all dressed in my uh, preppy Brooks Brothers type clothes. And I get off at the head of the stairs. He was on the second floor. And he was actually standing there waiting for me. And Joe standing there waiting for you is a sight to behold. I mean, he was at that point uh, uh, about 78 or 79. He was wearing his, uh, the shorts that you see in all the pictures. Uh, maybe, I don't remember, maybe wearing a top. Maybe not. Very bronzed. Uh, he had one glass eye. He assumed a boxer's stance. That's the way he almost always talked to you. He was like in a boxer's position, kind of leaning forward, bandy leg, muscles sticking out, veins all over the place. And he hardly said a word. And that was my first encounter with Joe. And uh, I get up there and I encounter him and I told him my name and he says, I know, I know. And so I go into this little room that was the locker room or the shower room, and it was a very makeshift thing, couple of benches, put on my shorts, hung my stuff up on a hook, uh, and uh, he gave me, I think he did that to everybody. He had these little cotton ballet, ballet practice shoes, they thin rubber, very thin rubber soles. He gave that to me, and he, uh, he kind of motioned me, said very little, didn't ask me if I had any medical conditions, if I'd spoken to a doctor and got approval to have exercise, didn't write my name down anywhere, didn't take a telephone number, he just motioned me over to a machine and he said, lie down. So I sat down on the reformer on the side. He told me exactly how to sit down, uh, sit right there, uh, face this way and sit. So I sat. And then he said, swing around, put your feet on the bar and your head there. And I did that. And then he started to tell me what to do. No demonstration, no nothing. Uh, push here, keep your feet at this angle, uh, do this. He didn't call it the Pilates V, the way, you know, he says, separate your toes, keep your heels together. And he, and he started to put me through this exercise. Now at the time, I was a pretty good athlete. I was on uh, several uh, squash teams in New York. Anyhow, 
About 45 minutes later, <laughs> I was in some kind of zone, he, he, uh, he said, uh, you're finished. Uh, there were a few OKs and goods, goods, and uh, no criticism, no mistake, he, nothing negative. If I didn't sit the way he wanted me to, like now I'm a little hunched over, I would get a poke here, wasn't too hard, but it was just enough to get you straightened out. Or now and then, he'd put his hand somewhere and push and do something without saying any, anything. And he says, take a shower. And I, I was absolutely nauseous. I actually threw up in the shower, which he knew but never <laughs> said anything about. And I came out uh, still sweating. And I, I know that I see things, it's not an aerobic, it's not aerobic. If that wasn't aerobic, I don't know what aerobic was. It may not have been high intensity aerobic. But anyhow, I came out and uh, he, he said, good. He said, I, let's say this was a Tuesday. He says, Thursday, seven o'clock. That was it. <laughs> I mean, I, and then I actually went into the room with him that I finished the exercise, that I nodded okay on Thursday to this day, and now we're talking 55, six years later, I don't know why I did it. I just, I just, I was captivated by something. There was something coming out of him of, of incredible focus on me. Uh, he was not dealing with a client. He was not dealing with another name on his customer list. It, it was me personally, somehow. And that, that got gotcha. you. He expected the same thing of everybody. He expected people to take it very seriously, to understand that it was not a way of losing two inches on your waistline uh, or trimming your buttocks or fixing your abs or whatever you were doing. It was a whole thing about your whole health, your whole mental attitude toward life. And what he expected of you was commitment. He had a way of scaring you off to the extent that you would not leave if you really wanted to do this. But you were out of there in a flash if you didn't, and that's what he, he had no time for anybody who didn't take it seriously. As you walked out, you gave him $5 cash. If you didn't have $5, or if you had 10 and he didn't have five, he'd say next time. And you could walk right out. Or you could say, Joe, next time. No record, no receipt, no paperwork, no nothing. You gave him five bucks. If you, next time you came in, he would have absolutely no memory that you didn't pay him. And he'd never say anything. It, it was not a business to him.